Okay, now we start looking at converting between bases. And we're going to start by looking at converting to decimal and come up with the generic framework for how a conversion to decimal works. And we'll actually look at converting a decimal number into a decimal number. So we'll look at the composition of what that decimal number is. And from there, we can then easily extend it to other bases of interest, such as converting binary to decimal and hexadecimal to decimal. Okay, so last time we talked about <clears throat> this whole concept of a positional number system, where you might have a number such as 1, 3, 2, radix point, 6, 5, 4. And that number <coughs> is, consists, of, consists of numerals. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a base 10 as a subscript down there just to, so that we know what base we're talking about now that we have multiple bases. And what I want to do is I want to write down the position variable. And the position is defined as a value of 0 at the numeral position to the left of the radix point, immediate left of the radix points, and then incrementing to incrementing by 1 going to the left, and then decrementing by 1 going to the right. So the position for these, <clears throat> for these numbers right here are as follows. OK, so now we're sitting here and we have these, we have the, uh, the position numbers. But what, what it really means is that we, we know that a number is formed by different positions having different what we call a weight. Okay? So we kind of know in a decimal system that 2 is the 1's position. So we have two ones worth of information, or two ones worth of value that contributes to this overall number. 3 is in the 10's position, and 1 is in the 100's position. So we kind of know that we, we just by studying the decimal system. But reality, where that comes from, is this concept of the positional weight. And the positional weight is defined as the radix of a number system raised to the position it's in. So in this situation, if we're in a radix of 10, what we could do is we could come down here and we could write the weight for each of these numerals in this number. <clears throat> so I can come along and I can say, OK, so the position 2 has a weight of radix 10 raised to the 0, which evaluates to 1. And then the numeral 3 has a weight of 10 raised to the position 1. And then the, the numeral in this position, position 2, would have a weight of two, 10 to the 2. Then we can use the same logic down here where we could say that this position, position negative 1, has a weight of 10 to the negative 1. Uh, position negative 2 has a weight of 10 to the negative 2. And position negative 3 has a position of 10 to the negative 3. If you evaluate those and bring them down and just solve for this, uh, anything raised to a, to a 0 power is a 1. And anything raised to a 1 power is itself. And then 10 squared is 100. So if you look at these values, this is where the terms the 1's position, the 10's position, and the 100's position come from, is those are just the weights of those actual positions within a number. Uh, similarly, we can come over here and we can evaluate 10 to the negative 1, which is simply 1 over 10, and that's where the term the 10's position comes from. And down here we have 1 over 10 squared, which is equal to 1 over 100, so that's the 100's position. And then finally we have the 10 to the negative 3, which is equal to 1 over 1,000, which is the thousandths position. So these are the respective weights of each of these positions. And if we wanted to figure out what the actual value of this number would be in decimal, what we do is we take the value of the numeral in the position and multiply it by its weight. So we could see that in this situation what we would have is we would have 2 times the weight of 1, and that would be the value that this position contributes to the number. If we then came over here, we would have 3 multiplied by 10, and that's the value that <coughs> this position contributes to the number. And then finally, we'd have 1 times 100, and that's the, that's the value that this contributes to the value. <coughs> OK, so then same thing over here. We'd have 6 multiplied by 1 tenths plus 5 multiplied by 1 one hundredths and then 4 
multiplied by one over one thousandths. So what that would multiply out to be, or excuse me, what you'd multiply all these together and add them, and you'd basically have 132, so you'd have 132 plus 6 tenths over 5 one hundredths plus 4 over 1 thousandths, or put in its fractional form, you'd have 6, 5, 4. So this makes sense. It's, we basically decomposed the decimal number, and then we reconstructed it, and we got the same thing. If we really looked formally what we just did, we can actually come up with, a, uh, with an equation. So the total decimal value, the total decimal value of a number, and this is of any base, is the summation of the positional value, and I'm going to use a subscript of i right here, <coughs> multiplied by the radix raised to i. And i is our summation variable where I'll have i is equal to starting at p min, so we're going to sweep from p min up into p max. So for example, if we tried to apply what we just did to this equation, we would have the summation from i is equal to p minimum. So in this situation, the lowest position was negative 3. So I'd go i is equal to negative 3 up to p max, which is 2. <clears throat> and then we would go through, and for each, vari for each summation variable, <clears throat> we would say the digit in position 3 multiplied by the radix raised to the position. So if you went through this summation, you would sum these six positions weights together and you would actually ul ultimately end up with 132.654 <clears throat> the base 10. So that's kind of a circular cyclic or circular in nature here because we just took a decimal number and we converted it back to decimal. But we did it to illustrate a point of how you convert any number into decimal. So what I can do now is, let's take a, an example of how we could extend that to converting binary to decimal. So what I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come along and I'm going to say let's convert a binary number into decimal. And what we'll do is say, <clears throat> let's take an example where we had 101.11 base 2, and I want to find its decimal, decimal value. So what we can do is say, okay, the, the formal definition of what this is is going to be the summation of i to the, <coughs> p, i is equal to p min. So in this situation, let's go over here and let's scale what p is. So the position is going to be, this is position 0, this is position 1, this is position 2. And over here, this is position 1, and this is position excuse me, negative 1 and negative 2. So if you look at the minimum here, we're going to have p minimum is negative 2, and we're going to sum up to positive 2. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the digit value. In this situation, we'll call it a bit, so I'll just write a b right here. And we'll go through each of these values in turn, going from negative 2 up to positive 2. And what we'll do is we'll multiply it by the radix raised to the position. So in this situation, that's the equation. What we can do, we can kind of do this in a column summation here by coming over and saying, okay, I want to know what the weight is of each position. And let's start with position 0. So we'll have radix raised to the position, 2 to 0. And then we'll have radix raised to the position and radix raised to the position. And then we'll come over here and we'll have radix raised to the position, radix raised to the position. I'm trying to stagger those so it's obvious what they are. Let me go ahead and bring those down and evaluate them just so we know. Uh, so let's start with 2 to the 0. Anything raised to 0 is a 1. Anything raised to a 1 is itself. Anything raised to a 2 is squared. So we'll have the weight is 1, 2, and 4 going that way. <clears throat> then over here we're going to have 1 half, 1 fourth, and that's it. Okay, so those are the weights that we have. And now what I want to do is I want to say what is the value. And what I'll do is say, okay, I'm going to take the value of the numeral <clears throat> or value of the bit in that position and multiply it by its positional weight and then sum everything. So in this situation I have 1 multiplied by 4, that's the value that that contributes, and then we're going to have 0 multiplied by 2, and then we're going to have 1 multiplied by 1, and then we're going to have 1 multiplied by 1 half, and then we're going to have 1 multiplied by 1 fourth. So now if we take all that 
and we sum everything together, what we'll be left with is, notice that 1 times 4 is, is 4, and you have a 0 here, and then you're going to have a 1 here, and then you're going to have a 1 half here, and then you're going to have a 1 fourth there. So if we summed all those together, what we're going to be left with is 5.75. Now I had to convert these into their fractional forms, but that's okay. <coughs> so I'm sitting here looking at this, and this is 5.75 in decimal. And that's actually correct. <coughs> now, what's neat about converting binary to decimal is that you can quickly observe that anything that has a zero in it will not contribute to the value of the number. So since you can only have zeros and ones, any zeros can be ignored right away. So really all you have to do if you're trying to do this quickly is just sum any position that has a one in it. And then since it's a one and you're going to multiply it by its positional weight, you really don't even do the, need to do the multiplication. You can quickly come into this number and say, I'll just sketch the weights down. So I know I have a weight of one fourth, I have a weight of one half, <coughs> I have a weight of one, and I have a weight of four. So I can just add those together and I can quickly come up with 5.75. So binary to decimal is actually quite, you can get, you can do it quite quickly. All right, let's look at one last one. Let's convert now hex to decimal. And let's take an example where we had a number which was, let's say, 1a b dot e f. <coughs> now, when you do hex to decimal, you're going to have to know what the, num or what the uh, decimal values of these numbers are. So one of the things you can do is you can kind of come over here and you can say, let's make a little table where we have hex a, b, c, D, E, and F, <coughs> and their decimal equivalents are going to be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And that's something that you'll commit to memory over time, whether you like it or not. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off by putting down the position. So I'm going to write P here. And this is the same as before. So this is position 0, this is position 1, and this is position 2. And then this is position negative 1, and this is position negative 2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the weight for each position. And here we're going to have a radix of 16 this time raised to a 0. This would be 16 raised to the 1, and this would be 16 raised to the 2. And then right here I'll have 16 to the negative 1, 16 to the negative 2. And at this point we can evaluate these just so we have it. So I'll take, this is going to be 1, this would be 16, this would be 256. And then over here I'll have 1 over 16, over here I'll have 1 over 256. <coughs> And now I'm ready to do the multiplication. So now when I do the value here, the value is going to be simply the digit. So I'll, in this position, so 1 multiplied by 256 plus a times 16. And I'll just go ahead and substitute 10 in for this right here. So 10 multiplied by 16. So I did the 10 is a is equal to 10. And then I did b, which is going to be equal to 11 multiplied by 1, and then I'm going to do E, which is 14, multiplied by 1 over 16, and then I'm going to do F, which is 15, multiplied by 1 over 256. So now when I have this, everything looks like it is good, so what I'm going to do is I'll just go ahead and sum all these. What I'm, what I'm left, up, left with is 427.9 three three five nine three seven five base ten so kind of a long number there but you can see those fractional fractional accuracies came from these summations over here so this form that we came up with works for it basically describes how a decimal number is formed and explains where the terms ones tens thousands come from and then we can extend that to other number systems converting back to decimal. So we looked at converting from binary to decimal and hex to decimal. So we'll stop there and next time we'll look at converting from decimal.